graphics of Microsoft Excel specifically for use with my class. And I'm going to go over some of the um, basic information you need. So the interface real quickly is pretty straightforward like many of the other Microsoft programs. Um, you see the tabs are ribbon up at the top here. Um, most of the time I work in that uh, home tab. And down at the bottom, you'll see these are called sheets down at the bottom. Uh, this is a um, Excel spreadsheet that I've already got set up. And so I, to make a new sheet, click on this plus sign here and it'll automatically number it uh, sequentially. So I'm on sheet three right now. To delete it, I can right click and click on delete. So back to sheet one, I'm gonna show you some tricks real quickly. Um, the first is formulas. So the formulas are a way to add some functionality, like if I wanted to do one plus two equals three, I can um, do that addition by typing in an equal sign that signals to Excel that this is a formula. And then I can click on the cell for one and then add a plus sign and then the cell for two. And then I get that addition, one plus two equals three. And if I click up here on the formula bar, it will highlight which cells are referenced. This dynamic uh, nature of the formula means that if I change one of these or both of them, the result will automatically update. Uh, so there's many different types of formulas that we use in the class, um, and you'll come to know these better. Uh, sum is a very is, is one that we use quite a lot. Um, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. You can also use parentheses to um, to uh, get the right order of operations, and um, I think that'll all become clear as you go. Another nice thing about Excel is that it has a, a fill feature that allows the, um, the program to automatically find or seek the most appropriate fill. So if I go one, two, three, I highlight these and then click on this bottom right hand corner. You see my cursor goes from a white plus to a black plus, and then it'll automatically fill uh, as kind of a smart fill down. Um, and this is responsive to the type of uh, data that it sees. So I can do January, February, March, and it will also find the rest of the year that way as well. Uh, so you can play with that as you, um, as you like, but it's um, pretty handy in a lot of cases. Um, another thing, another way that this is handy is if I go over here and um, I can add I can uh, uh, copy this three by pressing control C and then control V. It will copy them all since I highlighted them all. And then I can copy this formula using control C and control V. And I'll copy that one plus three equals four formula. I can double click on that. I, so I can uh, just copy this or uh, drag it and it will automatically drag that formula. Uh, I can also double click and it will fill down to the last uh, filled in cell, which is quite handy as well. By using a um, dollar sign, you can um, manipulate how Excel reads this. So right now it's um, this reference is a relative reference, C5 plus D5. And when I uh, drag down, it will update to the next row. If I wanted to, um, not have it be a relative reference, but an absolute reference, I could uh, click on the dollar sign and that will um, will uh, freeze that cell. So as I click down, it will freeze that cell so that it's always uh, in the same place. And um, similarly, you can do this by uh, just doing, so that's, that's um, freezing both D, the column D and row six, I could also just freeze a column D, which will keep the relative reference in the row, or I could freeze just the row six like that, and then you see that row six stays the same. So this is useful in a lot of different applications that'll become more clear.
When you copy and paste cells, you have to be careful, uh, particularly when you're copying and pasting formulas. So right now I'm going to press Control C and Control V, and notice that what I'm actually doing is copying the formula, and because Excel is smart, it's copying it relative. So as I copy it over two cells to the right, it's also copying these references two cells to the right. Um, if I wanted to just copy the number four and not the formula E5 plus F5, I can press Control C and then over here, right click and paste special. I go down here to paste special. I get a whole bunch of different options. What I want in this case is just the value without the formula. And that will just paste the value four as opposed to the formula E5 plus F5. The shortcut for doing that, by the way, is handy. Um, you can, instead of going down into this Paste Special menu, you can actually use this clipboard with one, two, three on it, and that uh, pastes just the number without the format or without the formula. Throughout the class, I'm going to be using a lot of graphs, and I want to show you just as an introduction how uh, to go about editing graphs, and so you can see how I make them too. Um, the probably the easiest way is to highlight the data that you'd like to visually to visualize and go to insert and then um, the all the different charts are located here in this in this um, menu and it gives you a little thumbnail to show you uh, some different options that you can start to visualize um, let's go I'll, I'll just go with this guy here and you can see once I insert that chart, it inserts it right into my um, my sheet. And I can edit this by going, by clicking on the data. You can see it highlights here which data it's referencing. Um, if I right click, I can uh, format the data series. And you see over here, this pop-up, it gives you a whole bunch of different options. Uh, both the series options, as well as the effects, as well as the fills and borders. So if I wanted to change the color, for instance, and go to a solid fill and go to, say, orange, oops, orange, and now I've got an orange fill instead of a blue one. Same with the, um, basically, almost everything is customizable about these. If I wanted to go to the axis on the left, I click on that, and you see now format axis comes up here. And if I click over to say um, access options, I can change the min and max by uh, inputting a number here instead of 18. If I fix it at eight, uh, it, it cuts the, the higher end at eight. I can fix the low end to be anything I want as well. If I reset it, it will automatically adjust to the boundaries of the data it's looking at. Uh, you can explore these uh, different uh, formatting options for the charts. One thing I do want to emphasize, though, is it's important that you um, always label your charts so that they're easy to understand what they are. And I would encourage you to go into the chart titles and uh, type them. So an appropriate title uh, might be um, monthly earnings or something like that. And, um, and you can uh, format this you know, a whole bunch of different ways of uh, dragging it around or changing the font size or the font itself and um, color, et cetera. Um, try to keep the graphs as simple and elegant as possible. <laughs> Not like what I produced here, please. <laughs> Another handy tip is that once you've got a graph made with a series of data, you can insert more data into that by inserting from the middle of the data. So if I wanted to insert three bars into this data, I can click on these rows and right click and say insert. And as I do that, notice that a gap forms right here in the data and I could um, add arbitrary numbers here and you'll see that those begin to populate in the graph itself. This is really handy when you want to um, add more data or subtract data. Similarly, you can delete data. Oops, there we go. By right-clicking on the row, and it will contract. 
Now, one thing to remember is if you add at the end, so say I have a row 12 here like that, um, the graph doesn't automatically update because the boundaries of the graph are here. Now, if I wanted to um, expand, I can actually drag this down and 12 will be added. Alternatively, I could go in here and insert a row and then insert that extra, um, this data back in there. For many of the Excel spreadsheets that I've made, I've included, um, I sort of uh, preset the print boundaries, uh, but you can reconfigure the print boundaries pretty easily. If you go to view and um, page layout, it will give you what it looks like. In this case, it's a mess. Um, I'm gonna go back to normal view and you see this dashed line, this vertical dashed line gives you the, the automatically made page boundaries. If I wanted to print just this graph, I can highlight the cells behind it. You go up to page layout and click print area, set print area. And now the this um, highlighted region is what will print. If I now go to uh, print titles and print preview, you can see what is uh, selected. From here, I can also select what I want to print to. Typically, I would print to uh, Adobe PDF. Um, you can also uh, change this by going to page setup and page and uh, say fit to one page by one, uh, one page wide by one page tall and seeing what that print preview looks like. So if you wanted to print multiple pages, this is one way to control it. My last tip here is um, has to do with very long strings of numbers, like where we have uh, a lot of times in data analysis, it can go off the screen, be very, very long. So say I had several uh, rows of numbers like this, um, and I wanted to know what the headings were. So say this represents um, number and day and hour. I, um, as I scroll down, I lose that information. So one way of seeing that information, not losing as I scroll down, is to split the page. One method of doing that is to highlight below the, the row that you want to see, go to view and hit split. And by splitting it, you're actually effectively making two uh, spreadsheet views. So in the lower view here or window, I can scroll down my data. In the upper one, I can keep it here to see the heading. I can even make this smaller and then page down so that I just see the heading. And now I can scroll through the data vertically. As I go through the rest of the tutorials, you'll see more tips on Excel, but hopefully this is enough to get you started.